In the last part of the series, part 36, we saw Yahshua's triumphant arrival in Jerusalem. It was truly a remarkable day and a fulfillment of prophecy. We saw Yahshua drive out the money changers in the temple and reprove the Pharisees who tried to catch him up with their questions. We also heard two parables in which he brought much clarity about Israel and his church. The word of Elohim is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And if we study the scriptures, it will change our lives. There are so many misconceptions and untruths that are spread all because of our lack of understanding of the Bible. You can't know the true will of Elohim without reading his word. You must study the scriptures diligently and allow it to be a part of you. Yahshua is our teacher, and if you study his words, it will change you from the inside out and renew you. Let's continue reading his word and see what he has to say. Let's begin. So Yahshua is still in Jerusalem, and the Pharisees went and plotted how they might entangle him in his talk. And they sent to him their disciples with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are true, and teach the way of Elohim in truth, and it does not concern you about anyone, for you are not partial to any man. Tell us, therefore, what do you think? Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar, or not? But Yahshua perceived their wickedness and said, Why do you test me, you hypocrites? Show me the tax money. So they brought him a denarius, and he said to them, Whose image and inscription is this? They said to him, Caesar's. And he said to them, Render therefore to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to Elohim the things that are Elohim's. When they heard these words, they marveled and left him and went their way. The Pharisees were again trying to catch up Yahshua. We don't know much about the Herodians through the Gospels, but based by their names we can assume that they were loyal supporters of the King Herod dynasty and were collaborators with the Roman government. This would make them opposites of the Pharisees, but apparently hate for Yahshua creates conditions for joining forces. The trap in their opinion was simple. Either Yahshua side with the Pharisees and risk being accused of insurrection against the Roman government, or side with the Herodians and lose favor with the masses. You see, the Jews despise paying taxes to their oppressors. But in Yahshua dealing with the Pharisees, he called them hypocrites because he knew they only pretended to have good intentions. In those times, the denarius had the image of Caesar on it, with an inscription on it calling him divine. If you notice when Yahshua was talking, he changed the word. The Pharisees asked about paying taxes, but when explaining, Yahshua used the word render, meaning to give or pay back. Give back Caesar the things that are his, and give back Elohim the things that are Elohim's. The money made from Rome was not Elohim's money, it was Rome's. Just like the United States dollar, or whatever currency you use, is not Elohim's, it's the central bankers. We are Elohim's. Us. Our bodies. Our heart. Our soul. Our minds. They all belong to him. He is the creator. We give him all of us. The things that the worldly government requires of us, we give them. As a follower of the Messiah, we have an obligation to Elohim first, and then to this earthly government. It is our responsibility to obey the law of the land until it becomes sinful to do so. We find this instruction in Romans chapter 13 verses 1 through 7 and 1 Peter chapter 2 verses 13 through 17. We need to hold on to this understanding because it is so relevant today, not just with our tax money and dollars. This point can be very hard to accept, but today we are giving Caesar what is Elohim's. Caesar today is represented through our government and governments all over the world. We give them much of our heart and mind and soul, placing more trust in elected officials than we do in Elohim. We believe that our vote matters, which it doesn't by the way, and we engage in politics of the world while ignoring what has been prophesied to come. We forget about biblical prophecy and believe in politicians, giving Caesar our heart, mind and soul, which belongs to Elohim. People actually believe that Donald Trump has stopped and halted the new world order. It's absolutely ridiculous. This world is controlled by the unseen hand who bowed to Satan, and nothing and no one is stopping this. If you believe that any of these world leaders are working for Elohim, you are deceived and you are rendering to Caesar what is Elohim's. Don't do it any longer. The same day, the Sadducees, who say there is no resurrection, came to him and asked them, saying, 
Teacher, Moses said that if a man dies, having no children, his brothers shall marry his wife and raise up offsprings for his brother. Now there were with us seven brothers. The first died after he had married, and having no offspring, left his wife to his brother. Likewise the second also, and the third, even to the seventh. Last of all, the woman died also. Therefore, in the resurrection, whose wife of the seven will she be? For they all had her. Yahshua answered and said to them, You are mistaken, not knowing the scriptures nor the power of Elohim. For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels of Elohim in heaven. But concerning the resurrection of the dead, have you not read what was spoken to you by Elohim? Saying, I am the Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of Isaac, and the Elohim of Jacob. Elohim is not the Elohim of the dead, but of the living. And when the multitudes heard this, they were astonished at his teaching. So now the Sadducees tried to catch Yahshua up. They did not believe in the resurrection and debated with the Pharisees about this very subject. They were bringing up a part of the law of Moses that is found in Deuteronomy chapter 25 verses 5 and 6. You could read it for yourself in the law. But this is what their question was based upon. Yahshua first rebuked them, showing that they were mistaken. They denied the resurrection and did not know the power of Elohim. He said that in the resurrection we are not married or given in marriage, but are like angels of Elohim. This is a beautiful understanding that we should hold on to. We want to place the way the world is today and apply it to heaven. We shouldn't do this. Yahshua astonished the multitudes listening because they heard something never taught before. Elohim is not the Elohim of the dead, but of the living, showing that the patriarchs are still living and there is a present spirit world over which Elohim presides over as well. So while the Pharisees were gathered together, Yahshua asked them saying, what do you think about the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, the son of David. He said to them, how then does David in the spirit call him Adonai, saying, Yahweh said to Adonai, sit at my right hand, till I make your enemies your footstool. If David then calls him Adonai, how is he his son? And no one was able to answer him a word, nor from that day on did anyone dare question him any more. When they were all done with their questions, Yahshua asked them his own question. His question had two parts. The first was about the identity of the Messiah. The answer to this question was in many Old Testament passages. I went over this prophecy in part 12 of the series. The Messiah will come from David's royal line, and the Pharisees understood that. But that question was easy and a prelude to what he was really asking. The second part of his question was about the interpretation of Psalm chapter 110, verse 1, which says, Yahweh said to Adonai, Sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. This verse describes the Messiah's presence in heaven until he comes to reign on earth. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 11 through 13 explains, And every priest stands ministering daily and offering repeatedly the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of Elohim, from that time waiting till his enemies are made his footstool. This scripture shows that the psalm, which was written by David, is prophetic and messianic. Adonai means master, and David showed him respect as calling him master, even though he also is his son. What Yahshua was implying is that himself, the son of David, is Elohim. He is a descendant of David, therefore human, but he also is divine. And just another note, this is also why I prefer to use original Hebrew words rather than the translated words of Lord, because in the King James, Psalm 110 says, the Lord says to my Lord. This is very confusing. It does not allow for proper understanding. So continuing, Yahshua spoke to the multitudes and to his disciples saying, the scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. Therefore, whatever they tell you to observe, that observe and do. But do not do according to their works, for they say and do not do. For they bind heavy burdens, hard to bear, and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers, but all their works they do to be seen by men. They make their phylacteries broad and enlarge the borders of their garments. They love the best places at the feasts, the best seats in synagogues, readings in the marketplaces, and to be called by men, Rabbi, Rabbi. But you 
do not be called rabbi, for one is your teacher, the Messiah, and you are all brethren. Do not call anyone on earth your father, for one is your father, he who is in heaven. And do not be called leaders, for one is your leader, the Messiah. But he who is greatest among you shall be your servant, and whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. But woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For you neither go in yourselves, nor do you allow those who are entering to go in. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayers. Therefore you will receive greater condemnation. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you travel land and sea to win one proselyte, and when he is one, you make him twice as much a son of hell as yourselves. Woe to you, blind guides, who say, whoever swears by the temple, it is nothing. But whoever swears by the gold of the temple, he is obliged to perform it. Fools and blind, for which is greater, the gold or the temple that sanctifies the gold? And whoever swears by the altar, it is nothing. But whoever swears by the gift that is on it, he is obliged to perform it. Fools and blind, for which is greater, the gift or the altar that sanctifies it. Therefore, he who swears by the altar, swears by it, and by all things on it. He who swears by the temple, swears by it, and by him who dwells in it. And he who swears by heaven, swears by the throne of Elohim, and by him who sits on it. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin, and have neglected the weightier matters of the law, justice and mercy and faith. These you ought to have done, without leaving the others undone. Blind guides, who strain out a gnat and swallow a camel, woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you cleanse the outside of the cup and dish, but inside they are full of extortion and self-indulgence. Blind Pharisee, first cleanse the inside of the cup and dish, that the outside of them may be clean also. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you are like whitewashed tombs, which indeed appear beautiful outwardly, but inside are full of dead men's bones and all uncleanness. Even so, also outwardly appear righteous to men, but inside you are full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! Because you build the tombs of the prophets and adorn the monuments of the righteous, and say, If we had lived in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Therefore, you are witnesses against yourselves, that you are sons of those who murdered the prophets. Fill up, then, the measure of your father's guilt. Serpents, brood of vipers, how can you escape the condemnation of hell? Therefore, indeed, I send you prophets, wise men, and scribes. Some of them you will kill and crucify. Some of them you will scourge in your synagogues and persecute from city to city. That on you may come all the righteous bloodshed on the earth, from the blood of righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah, son of Berechiah, whom you murdered between the temple and the altar. Assuredly, I say to you, all these things will come upon this generation. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the one who kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to her. How often I wanted to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you are not willing. See, your house is left to you desolate. For I say to you, you shall see me no more till you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of Yahweh. For those that falsely like to come and say that Yahshua never spoke against people or rebuked people, they're just not reading their Bibles. Because if you read this passage, Yahshua is really giving it to these Pharisees. He is really calling them out. The Pharisees were an extremely hypocritical group. If you didn't recognize this before from the other times Yahshua spoke about them, you definitely should get the picture now. His rebuke of the Pharisees can be placed on many false teachers of our now modern times. The hypocritical things that the Pharisees did, we see often within our modern day church. You should use this passage of scripture when reviewing your church and pastors. This can be a very difficult thing to come to terms with because many people don't want to review their pastors and church leadership and be critical of them. They feel like it's judging. But Yahshua is pointing out the hypocrisies. Understand, the Pharisees were in charge of teaching the people, but instead of helping the people understand more about the Father, they fed themselves and placed those who follow them against Yahweh by murdering his son. 
they were compromised with the world and brought judgment against Israel in the end. If you do not review your church organization, the doctrine they teach you, and the fruit they produce, it's very possible that they are doing the same thing to you that the Pharisees did to the Jews. Instead of placing you in the will of the Father, they have placed you in direct opposition of the Father. This goes for those under leadership in Christian churches and those under leadership in Hebrew Israelite camps. Read this passage that Yahshua is speaking and ask yourself, could this be your pastor and church organization? There's also a portion in this passage that seems to get overlooked. When Yahshua says, do not call anyone on earth your father, for one is your father, he who is in heaven. He is not talking about your parent, but your spiritual father. This seems to be something that is overlooked by the Roman Catholic Church and practicing Catholics. They give their priest the title father, clearly ignoring what Yahshua has told them not to do. Matter of fact, this whole passage can be tied to the Roman Catholic Church and their many hypocrisies. Even the Pope is shown to be a hypocrisy of the scripture. If you speak with practicing Catholics, please show them this passage of scripture and show them how their church is ignoring this instruction. Now there is one section in these scriptures that is often misused. When Yahshua says, Woe to you scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin and have neglected the weightier matters of the law, justice and mercy and faith. These you ought to have done without leaving the others undone. People like to often use this scripture that because Yahshua told the Pharisees to tithe, that that means we should be tithing as well. This misuse of scripture stems from a lack of context and understanding. Now I have a video dedicated to tithing, so if you do not understand this, you should watch the video. But the tithe was a requirement for the children of Israel. Numbers chapter 18 verse 21 says, Behold, I have given the children of Levi all the tithes in Israel as an inheritance in return for the work which they perform, the work of the tabernacle of meeting. As well as verse 26 says, Speak thus to the Levites, and say to them, When you take from the children of Israel the tithe, which I have given you from them as your inheritance, then you shall offer up a heave offering of it to Yahweh, a tenth of the tithe. You see, the tithe was meant to support the Levites, who did not receive an inheritance of land like the other tribes, so they were not able to raise their own crops and support themselves. They were the priests spread amongst all the tribes. The 12 tribes were responsible for supporting the Levites through their tithes. There were, of course, Levites still amongst the Jews during the times of Yahshua, and everyone was still required to tithe to them. So this is why Yahshua told the Pharisees that they should still tithe. When the church tithes today, they are not supporting the Levites. They are supporting pastors and organizations. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with supporting them, but it's not meant to be done by tithing. Tithing is a very specific thing done to support the Levites. Our support should be done through offerings, giving what the Ruach HaKodesh has placed on your heart. Tithes and offerings are two entirely different things. The churches teach tithing and it's just out of context. When explaining this point to others, many like to bring up the point that Abraham tithed to Melchizedek in Genesis chapter 14. And while Abraham did tithe to Melchizedek, that was not a commandment but an example of a tithe. And even if you decide that you want to follow that example, it should never be taught as an obligation, which still makes it an offering. The point is scripture must always be used in context. Just because you see a word that matches with your point, you still must use the word in context. You should always support the church, but it's never a burden and something commanded. If you are led by the Ruach HaKodesh, he will guide you into how you should provide your offerings. Don't let anyone use this passage from Yahshua out of context with you. Okay, so we went over a lot of stuff. Let's take a look at what we should learn from this part in the series. 1. Give back Caesar the things that are his, and give back Elohim the things that are Elohim's. The money made from Rome was not Elohim's money, it was Rome's. Just like the United States dollar, or whatever currency you use, is not Elohim's. It's the central bankers. Two, we are Elohims, our bodies, our heart, our soul, and our minds. They all belong to him. He is the creator. We must give him all of us. The things that the worldly government requires of us, we give them as long as it does not require us to sin against the father. Three, today we are giving Caesar what is Elohim's. 
Caesar today is represented through our government and governments all over the world. We give them much of our heart and mind and soul, placing more trust in elected officials than we do in Elohim. Four, in the resurrection, we are not married or given in marriage, but are like angels of Elohim. Five, after Yahshua had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, he sat down at the right hand of Elohim, from that time waiting till his enemies are made his footstool. Hebrews 10, 13. Six, what Yahshua was implying in Matthew chapter 22, verses 41 through 46, is that himself, the son of David, is Elohim. He is a descendant of David, therefore human, but he is also divine. Seven, Yahshua's rebuke of the Pharisees can be placed on many false teachers of our now modern times. The hypocritical things that the Pharisees did we see often within our modern day church. You should use Matthew chapter 23 when reviewing your church and pastors. Do not call anyone on earth your father, for one is your father, he who is in heaven. He is not talking about your parent, but your spiritual father. 9. Matthew chapter 23 verse 23 is an often misused passage of scripture used falsely to promote tithing. 10. Tithing was a very specific thing done to support the Levites. Our support should be done through offerings, giving what the Ruach HaKodesh has placed on our hearts. Tithes and offerings are two entirely different things. The churches teach tithing and it is just out of context. I speak often against the modern day church and its pastors, and I wanna make this clear. I am not against the church in any way. I am against the practices and doctrines of today's current church who mix the world in with their teaching. There's too much compromising that goes on today within the church. The church is not an organization that needs to be approved with the government. We should all be the church and not just go to church. So many people today have left the church and have been forced to worship the Father privately because there are not many sound churches that teach the true word of Elohim. If this is you, do not be ashamed of this action. The Father has dealt with you as he has dealt with many of us. Be proud that you heard his voice and heeded his instruction. I'm working on a teaching that covers this more in depth, but what I want you to understand is that you are the church and we are called out and set apart. There are many things that are done today that do not bring the Father any glory and we all must be aware of it. We must continue to seek to please the Father and reject the things that come against him and do not bring honor to his name. Do not feel as if you're sinning because you do not have a church home, but still do not reject assembling with other like-minded believers if you encounter them. I'm very thankful for the followers of this channel because for such a long time, we felt alone, like we were the only ones out there that were like this. And to have the support of so many of you around the world and to read the comments and what you share is an enormous blessing to me. I'm very thankful for you all. So if the Father has called you out of the modern day church organizations, pray and make sure you are hearing him correctly and follow his voice. Not all churches are bad, but a lot of them are. Focus on your personal relationship with him and be his church. Minister to others that lack understanding and continue to strengthen your walk with him. We will all be redeemed soon. Okay, thanks again for watching. If this has blessed you, please make sure to like it and share it. If you haven't done so already, please make sure you subscribe to this channel. I upload every week. Don't forget to follow this ministry on Facebook and Instagram. As always, I would like to give a special thank you to those who have donated to this ministry. You know who you are. I'm sincerely grateful and blessed by you. I'm humbled by your support and I praise the Father for each and every one of you. Thank you for your obedience to Yahweh's call on your heart. Thanks again everyone for watching. I love you all.